you know, uh, different type of stuff, but I, at the latest, it's probably like an 84% success ratio, and that's just grabbing emails off of Google for a company, and uh, you don't really know how many of those are active and non-active, but, you know, if you take, say, Acme Bank, you go out, you grab all the emails, what I've seen is 84% of that, where you get valid credentials come back. So doing this the old way, um, it, it don't really take a lot of technical skills. All you got to do is find the emails, you find the site to be fished, you create the site, uh, you set up the PHP or whatever mail spoofer, uh, you test it to make sure it works, you don't have misspellings, it's, you know, use proper grammar, send it out, and then you monitor it. So basically, in the monitoring, you, you're just sitting there waiting so you can tell the Apache logs or whatever, or you can run something like TCP dump. Just all you want to do is you want to see that coming in. So this is the new VMware image. Um, this is what the tool is going to look like. I wanted to show this, but obviously it crashed on me, story of my life, and I can't get it to come back up. So we're just going to work off the, the slides here. So um, the first step of course, is, is to log in. This has got a, a MySQL back end, and we've done, we've done some stuff. You know, I, I wanted to leave it just open, just, you know, just kind of like WebGoat or something like that. Um, you know, not let security get in the way of getting this thing done, right? But uh, uh, we had a little talk and decided we, you know, it is an OWASP deal, so we would put a little bit of security into it. So once you log in, um, here is where you set up the client information. Um, and the goal behind this is for reporting. I mean, reporting is not real big right now, but you know, later on, that is, you know, we want to want to do like some of the other tools. So you, you you'll be able to go through and map this process out. So you know, at x amount, you know, x time we sent this user, we did this, then this, and I'd be putting a report. But here, you put in the client name, you put in any URLs and scope, um, you, you enter the uh, email collection method. So it's either a whitelist or a blacklist or a mixture of both. And if there's any IP addresses, put that there. All right. So this is the this is the email recon piece. So if the client don't want to give a whitelist, they don't want to say, "Hey, check these addresses out." What we do, um, Mike Menifee, he wrote the uh, email recon piece and the brute force the yeah, the brute piece there. So what, what the, the search engine recon does is it goes out and it pulls down to say Google, just like you would. I mean, the easiest thing to do is just do at client.com and see, you know, all the pages that come back. I mean, we would hope that every organization has policies in place that say you don't need to post, you know, any kind of information in forums using your internal email address. But we know nobody follows that. I'm the world's worst. I've got 10,000 at least, you know, from every, every company I've ever worked at, I post it all over it. So, um, but we, you shouldn't be doing it. Anyway, uh, the, the brute force tool, what, what we've set that up or the goal of that to do is, is a couple different things. Um, first would be to just brute force through a, a list of names to identify email addresses. Um, we're also working on a, not only the email addresses, but say once you collect those, if you just had a couple, you know, sample password lists, maybe two or three times so it wouldn't lock it out, you can run down through there. And if you get in that way, you can go and further enumerate all the other email addresses. Um, but this is really, this is really for setting, setting the attack up. I mean, most of the time you'll be working off a white list or just a search engine recon tool that'll go out and pull stuff down. And we tried to put some approval stuff in here, um, you know, just kind of track that along the way as well. All right, so we've logged in, we've set the client up, we've had the email module go out, say it went off Google or something and, and pulled the emails back, or say we use a whitelist, either way. At that point, we've got our targets loaded up. Uh, at this piece, it can pull in either the URLs or the IP addresses in scope. So what it would actually do is go out to um, the network, kind of like an NMAT would do, or, or really like a, maybe a NIC2 or something like that, where we, we have a big list of what we call portals. You know, it could be, again, 
uh, webmail, Citrix, VPN, anything like that. Anything we can identify, um, you know, that's pretty common. Uh, this piece will go out, it'll grab that, or look at all that information and say, okay, we found this, this, and this based on the emails we've, <clears throat> we've uh, identified. It kind of recommends and said, okay, you know, we, we recommend using the uh, OWA. So what you would do, uh, you would just click on the, which one you want. And, and this is what it would look like. The templates will be set up. So just think of it as, as your web server directory, the bunch of different you know, subdirectories under that. And these are already set up in there. So when you go in, you, you set this attack up, that's automatically inserted so it knows where to go. Uh, but this is what it would look like. I mean, this is just save as, pull it right off. I mean, it's beautiful because it doesn't break. Sometimes, you know, some of the older versions, you have to go in and, you know, cut stuff out and, and make it work, but uh, all you do is, is save as. So anyway, it would look just like what the clients are, are used to seeing. And if they've got something, you know, again, if, if they went in and they put their, say they customized this, um, and it had logos and stuff, you know, company name here, that doesn't matter. Again, save as, it pulls it down exactly what they've done. The user's already used to it. So all you do is you, you, uh, you tie in the, the back end piece that actually collects the data. And you test that it works. So, you know, this, this shows just a test, test. And of course, the, the actual user wouldn't see this part. Um, what we normally do, or, or something I found out that really works well, is a little bit of uh, redirection. You log into it. If, if you keep them, you know, if you just, after you send those credentials and it mails it off or keeps it local, you know, if you send it back to that site again, you know, a user is going to think, hmm, I better enter those credentials again. I didn't get logged in. I've seen them do it five or six times in a row and they just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. So what the tool does is it redirects them to their real website. So when they go back in the next time they want to log in, it actually logs in so it don't cause any suspicion. Um, but you know, some, sometimes you, you know, what we're really trying to do when we're testing any kind of social engineering or, or this type of attack is we want to see them follow your instant response guidelines and policies in place. They should, they, they should know that you never should get an email from technical support, you know, hey, log in, we've updated this, you know, that shouldn't be happening. Um, but it don't slow anybody down. <clears throat> All right, so it's logging as captured locally. Uh, it's encrypted. Anyway, so that was the redirect confusion. So you can send them to Google or, or you know, I, I prefer just sending it back to the, uh, back to their real homepage and have them log in. All right, so here's the spoofed email piece. Um, very, very simple. To, from, you can import the, the list, um, the body, you can write your own, or you can select from scenarios. So the tool has several scenarios built in, like a third party technical company, um, you know, just, just different, different, different stuff that, that I've known to work. You can, of course, it needs to be tweaked a little here and there, but I mean, it's just a couple, you know, two or three scenarios that are pretty common. Um, Milgram experiment, that's, that's pretty good. And researching this kind of stuff, it, it, you know, it's more about authority. Um, the footer, all right. So the footer piece, if you select a scenario, it'll have the footer in it.